Yeah, I didn't do warm-ups last week, and I didn't do it yesterday. I didn't do it last week because um, I was doing a bigger video, and uh, I just figured that would just be too much footage. I didn't end up finishing the video because I got pulled into something else, but um, I got to do the B-roll for that. It's one of those. Um, I did a timing test for it, and I did the test for the B-roll. But, uh, yeah, I just have to kind of sit down and, and do that. This week, I have some stuff, but when I am not doing that stuff, I am going to write the second chapter of The Nature of Software, my serialized essay, I'm calling it. And I was thinking about it out loud on Twitter last night about how, like, what it is, why I think the, why I think, I mean, I think the work of uh, Christopher Alexander is important for, I mean, it's important for buildings and it is important for software. Um, and I think it's because... You know, the reason why software developers were attracted to Alexander's work is because he actually works like you have to work in software in order to produce results, but he's doing it for buildings. And again, like, he kind of gets bucketed into this sort of neo-trad nostalgia, you know, let's go back to the past where everything was idyllic and, and pretty. And... Um, and then uh, certainly his buildings look that way. And I, I recently found some by a Japanese architect. I'll put the link in the thing. Uh, somebody put a thread on Twitter, but like I was, I've never seen it before. But there, the buildings that this guy does are eminently, they look new. They don't look like old timey stuff like Alexander's buildings do. They look, they look contemporary, but they absolutely exhibit the 15 properties that Alexander writes about in the nature of order. So vis-a-vis -vis my newsletter, the nature of software. And I mean, to my knowledge, I don't, I don't know if anybody's tried this yet, like tried to take the 15 properties from the nature of order and turn it into the nature of software or turn it into software. I mean, I didn't look very hard, but <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. But, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't know. Sometimes, like, I have no idea how you search for that, you know, in Google. Like, you, you know, some medium post, whatever, right? Like, um, the, what had occurred to me was that, I mean, first of all, the idea behind the 15 properties, and again, the, the number 15 is not important. It's just the number of properties that Alexander ended up with they are also, they're morphisms, they're structure-preserving transformations. And Alexander's building methodology, so he had effectively a recursive, you know, OODA loop process that would run, and then it would sort of select one of these transformations and apply it, and then run again, select, apply, run, select, apply. And so, you know, Sounds like an algorithm to me. And the idea was, and the reason why, you know, we care about 15 properties in particular is because, you know, it's a typology, it's an inventory, it's like a mnemonic. You know, if you say, for example, the first one was levels of scale, you say, okay, well, why is... Why is levels of scale good anyway as a property, as a piece of artifact, as a, as a characteristic of, of an artifact? And the answer is because it, it sort of chunks the, the artifact. It makes it, instead of just being, when you go and you look at a Mies van der Rohe building, you know, it's featureless. And, you know, every skyscraper since, you know, up until postmodernism would be like, yeah, we want a featureless monolith. 
and you know, so it doesn't tell you about what goes on inside. It's just this sort of blank thing. And, um, you know, so introducing levels of scale into a, into a, an art of, into a building, you know, you, you can just say apply levels of scale to this form. And that's, you know, obviously you're doing this on the drawing board. And so you can say there's an analogous thing in software, like apply levels of scale. And then re, you know, and then iterate, and so that that seems to make perfect sense. And you know, so the next one, the one that I'm going to be writing this week, is strong centers. I'm not going to you know chat too too much about it, but the same sort of thing. It's like we go into our toolbox of transformations, and then we apply the transformation, and that you know, seems to me to be a natural and ordinary thing to do. And I think part of the thing that uh, what I really appreciate about the nature of order is that it makes the process of building buildings ordinary and analogously. And I think that we could really benefit from a demystification of the software development process. If we just said, this is, you know, this is obviously an expert thing, but you know, the computer has been around since almost as long as the TV now. We've had PCs for 44 years, you know. There's no reason to to say that these are whiz bang, you know. We everybody's got experience with software. First-hand experience with software. They've had it for you know, if they ha if they haven't had it for 40 plus years, they've certainly had it for 30 plus years. So, you know, for direct involvement with it. I mean, if you actually have never touched a computer before you owned a smartphone, you know, you know, maybe you're living in a bush or something like that. So, you know, the point is that the software has idiosyncratic behavior and it's like a normal part of life now. It is an ordinary idios, but it's an idiosyncratic part of life. Nothing else is like software, but it's ordinary and it's here to stay and I think we should really grow up about how we talk about it because it's hurting us. And so when I think of the work of Christopher Alexander in buildings and its applicability to software, I think it has a powerful normalizing force that will enable us to talk about it with say, you know, the people who are consuming it from us, the people who are paying us to make it, and demystify it. They will still come to us because we're experts. But the this sort of, oh, I don't know what you do, oh, it's magic, Durr. like that attitude really needs to stop. Because this shit is normal. This shit is everyday stuff that, you know, there's, it is part of life now. It's been part of life for a very long time. It's been part of life since the television minus, you know, say 20 years or something like that, which is nuts when you think about it. You know, boomers grew up with the first TVs, you know, Gen Xers grew up with the first PCs. It's normal now and if it's really just like if we're just doing this for the benefit of boomers i think it's time to just cut them loose you know just start talking about it like it's normal and if they they can either catch up or not anyway i'm gonna finish my coffee